Hello and good evening from Benilde St. Margaret's. I'm Bruce Homer along with Phil Furk and tonight it's the St. Louis Park or, or Benilde St. Margaret Red Knights. Phil got the St. Louis Park Orioles on my mind and against because Spring Lake Park you have the SLP so Spring Lake Park Panthers and for the Red Knights they come into this game seven and five the Panthers six and five starting lineups we'll have in just a second here as the tip is controlled by the Panthers who start with Colin Price, A.G. Agia, Devontae Scribas, T.C. Robinson, and Eric Curran in their top five. For the Red Knights, as it's stolen away, and we get a foul in the backcourt, is Sam Lynch, Jason Edwards, Colin Polaric, Nick Burney, and Grant Holly. Bruce, this should be an interesting game tonight because both teams look like they are fast, like to run the court, about the same size. Well, the foul was called on T.C. Robinson, the leading scorer for the Panthers. Lynch had it deflected right back into the hands of Jason Edwards. Edwards takes it from the free throw line back to Lynch. Now around for Polaric. Red Knights just patient right now, looking for the to break it in against his defense. So is this a man to man or more of a zone? What it's kind of a because it looked like they're going it, back and forth. It could a little go bit. either way here. <laughs> Looks like they're really putting a lot of, you know, a, a lot of uh, emphasis on uh, 42. Grant Holly picking up the foul for the Red Knights, his first foul, first, first team foul. 16:48 to go, no score here, and the lob in pass underneath, and a nice uh, move by Eric Curran to get the basket that time. Yeah, he was under the basket, actually had to reach around and hit the backboard. It's like a pool shot. Good job. First two points of the game, 2 nothing for the Panthers. Red Knights Lynch takes it in. Polaric now. You see was guarded by Scribus, and it's back up top for Polaric. Edwards is a, had the player cutting, was Bernie that time. Now Edwards takes it in and gets the basket. It was a nice spin move by Edwards just to get, to get that nice angle on the layup. Three didn't go, and the rebound was taken down by Holly for the Red Knights. Red Knights into the front court. Polaric from the free throw line extended, and he's got the basket. First two points of the game for Colin, and it's now 4 2 for the Red Knights. Vanille likes to play this 1 3 1, and they play it very well, and sometimes they mix it up a lot during the game, and it's very confusing sometimes for the uh, opposition. Well, that time uh, the Panthers turning it over. Panthers put a little bit of pressure on, and the Red Knights do a great job getting it into the front court. Bruce, we've watched Vanille play now for a couple years, and you know those. The teams look like they're a good shot, just like they're cloned. They, they have so much patience on offense. There's that half court, 1-3-1, one, one. just enough to keep pressure on the ball. Maybe a trap. Well, the Red Knights hit the three this time. Panthers missing the three, and the Red Knights come out. Edwards quickly into the front court. And a three put up off the mark that time by Bernie. Bernie got the rebound underneath. Now for Lynch, and Lynch gets the roll. And we'll get a timeout. That was a good timeout by Spring Lake Park because they just were giving Benil too many good looks. It seemed like they were able to get a good look every time they passed the ball. Uh, Spring Lake Park has to get a little tougher in their face on defense. You can see that already. So Grant Guzzi in his 22nd year as a head coach at Spring Lake Park takes the timeout. Last game for Spring Lake Park was uh, 56 to 39 victory over Forest Lake. They've 
won five out of their last six games. They're only lost to Tartan. And Phil, the Red Knights also on a little bit of a streak there. Yeah, they're four, uh, four out of the last five. They've won the, uh, so they're on a little mini roll as well. They lost to Eden Prairie 76 to 91 in that uh, group of five games. Couple close ones too, 62, 60, 40, 38. Uh, so, so, so they've been, in, uh, they've had a lot of experience uh, already this season, although it's half over. Nice three by Colin Price. Colin Price for three. When I mentioned before that Benil looked like they're clones, they run this offense so well, and they get so many open looks like that right there. We were saying that Spring Lake Park has to get a little more aggressive on defense, especially man to man. Sam Lynch having a good start here. Long pass. TC Robinson had a game this season where he scored 42 points. Well, he wanted to match his number, I think. <laughs> There's another three and tipped out of bounds off of the Red Knights. So the Panthers will get it back in. We're going to get a stop into the game. Jake Levon, number 50, comes into the game. And the basket by A.G. Agia. One thing you can see is the Red Knights will push the ball up the court in a hurry. And there's a three. Grant Holly. Nice thing about a 1 3 1 is you can trap in so many places. You can trap up on the mid court line, you can trap down in the corners, mix it up a little bit. It's very confusing. Why Lynch is just in a roll, on a roll right now. He sure is. Has he missed a shot yet? I don't think so. And the Red Knights put up 16 points here so far. Early going in the first half. First time we've seen the Panthers really slow it down a little bit here, Phil. And well, they're trying to figure out how to get that ball inside, and they haven't been able to accomplish that at all. So they're just swinging it around here. Yeah, and Benil's that 1 3 1 is just confusing to them. Good defense that time as it was stolen away by Polaric. Inside. You can see there, uh, the Red Knights are getting inside the lane right now. Absolutely. And one of the reasons for that is Spring Lake Park is not helping out. And we're seeing a double team inside anytime the ball goes in. A shot by Bernie just off the mark, but uh, they've been trying to get it into Scribus or a Gia inside. And the Red Knights have sort of double teamed the post player inside. First foul on uh, Nick Bernie. So Sam Baker will come into the game along with uh, Jack Hathaway. Scribus, T.C. Robinson. Trying to direct traffic. Again inside the jib. And there's the three. A couple times, uh, Colin Price has uh, taken that shot, hasn't uh, been successful the last couple times. And a foul called on the well, Panthers. Lake, yeah, I'm sorry. Spring Lake Park has to get the ball into the middle to be able to reverse it. So far, oh, Benil has taken that reversal pass away from them every time. And make them play on one side of the court, which is very difficult. Phil, the last foul called on A.G. Agia. That's his second foul, second team foul. His first team second.
Lynch from up top. Bernie cutting Lynch. Jump shot was reflected in a foul called on Jake Levon. That will send Lynch to the free throw line. Lynch did a really nice job on that. He created a little space by giving a little head and shoulder fake and then fading back. So Lynch missing the first free throw. They will have some nice scoring balance all the way through their whole lineup. And that's what makes them so difficult to play against. So 17-7, the Red Knights lead here early on, and 11.05 left to go here in the first half. Full court pressure put on, and pass inbounded to Scribus. Drives in, nice pass inside for Price. Five points in the game for Price, eight point Red Knight lead. That's what Spring Lake Park has to do. They have to get down in transition because once they get down in their half court offense, they're not able to reverse the basketball to get good shots. Bernie's three off the front of the iron. Scribus puts up the three off the mark. Kicked out of bounds, and I think it's going to be Red Knights basketball. We'll have a substitution coming in for Spring Lake Park. will be number 21. That's Aaron Flink. Polaric is fouled on the sidelines. Scribus. Picking up the foul, that's a fourth team foul. Right now, Bruce, it appears that uh, Benil Red Knights are playing with a, a lot more energy than Spring Lake Park, both on offense and defense. A lot of movement. Which is really the trademark of Benil. See players cutting to the basket. What a great cut and a good feed as Bernie converts. Well, Bernie cut hard. That's the difference between just kind of walking through it or sprinting through. Bernie did a good job to create that pass. Bernie on the other end gets called for his second foul of the game. The ball is on number 20 for the Red Knights. Nick Bernie, his second team third. D.C. Robinson hitting the free throw. D.C. Robinson at the line for the Panthers. Matt Lilienthal comes into the game. are going to take a timeout. They lead by eight. And uh, you mentioned you really can notice that they, uh, they're they playing with a lot of energy moving. And, and it's just sort of fun to watch that offense when they're in motion the way they are. Well, they do. They have such a, a precision offense that they're able to keep good spacing, get the ball where they want to, and quick reversals. And then they attack the basket. And so it's as, you know, as good as it gets on offense. I don't know if they've had a turnover in their half-court offense. And the other thing to, you notice in this game, too, is Spring Lake Park really wants to push the ball up the court, but the Red Knights do such a good job getting back, getting set on defense that uh, they really haven't given Spring Lake Park any easy opportunities um, on the offensive end. Well, that's what I was saying earlier, that Spring Lake Park's probably their best offense would be a quick, hard transition on a fast break. Jason Edwards back into the game for the Red Knights. This is Sam Baker up top. Back to Edwards. Half the way. This is Lynch. One thing you notice, four players touching the ball there. Four different players. They move and pass. They're all ball handlers. Uh, well, that was a great block. 
Yeah, that, that was Grievous. Grievous. Yeah. yeah. Too hard that time, but Red Knight's getting multiple opportunities, and Lynch hits the three. And Lynch is deadly on that side of the court, being a left hander, of course. TC Robinson can't get it to go. Put back, not good. Good rebound, and a foul is called. Great effort that time by AG Agia. Toughest shot in basketball is that little floater that they uh, Spring Lake practiced. Well, they missed a shot, but it's a very difficult shot. You're moving, you don't have any balance, you're just kind of throwing it up. Matt Lilienthal picking up the foul. A tough shot <laughs> off balance that came right back into the hands of Curran. That's what you call a rebound without <laughs> jumping. <laughs> That's the kind I could uh, come up with. They continue to work it inside. But when they get in there, the shots aren't open. There's T.C. Robinson off the mark on his three, and here come the Red Knights. It's an 11-point lead. Edwards gets by T.C. Robinson, and he's going to be called for traveling that time. He got by Robinson, but didn't get by number 21, Aaron Flink, who was right there. Edwards did a good job on that spin reversal move. It's a tough call, a call for traveling, but it's hard to say if it was or if it wasn't. Well, 13 in the point, 13 points in the game for Lynch, and he finally takes a well-deserved seat on the bench, replaced by Holly, almost a steal this time by Hathaway. Three in and out, and it was batted by Holly into the hands of Edwards. Edwards in the front court, jump shot short. Save comes our way. Good hustle by Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> Just about took your microphone. <laughs> that was, uh, Nil is so good at switching their defenses from that 1-3-1. Now they're in a 2-3 zone, and they all always also go back to a man. So they're really hard to play against until you recognize what defense they're in. Well, Colin Price has been the big scorer so far for Spring Lake Park. Seven points in the game for him. Edwards at the three. Took a couple bounces off the rim, and... Spring Lake Park comes away with it. This is Robinson. And we got to push inside. I think this is going to be on Holly to be his second foul. Ogile in the game for the Panthers, Gugamos. In the game for Benil. Spin move. Just off the mark, foul. Lilienthal. And Lilienthal picks up his second foul. Milan did a really nice job of creating that shot and getting fouled.
Panthers two for three from the free throw line so far. Make that two for four. And Hathaway got up in the air on that rebound. Pretty nice. Here we go. See what happens here. How they transition down the floor. Contested shot that time. Good hustle by Price. Gets inside. And again off the. Iron and uh, rebounded well, by the Panthers the had a good good opportunity that time. They just weren't able to uh, put the ball in the basket. The scoring pace has just slowed down a little it bit. Yes, right? yes, it has. And that's kind of in Benil's favor because they they can run a lot of clock just with their offense. And then they'll get a backdoor cut like that. So Sam Baker getting his first two points of the game. 24 13 the score. Red Knights back by 11. As G and Scribus get ready to check back into the game. Levon decided to pass up the three, but Price will take it and hits. Colin Price with his second three of the game. Ten in the game for Price. Back to an eight point game. And traveling is called. And William Thaw. So they'll bring Lynch back into the game. Also, Blair comes back in. Well, the Panthers are, you know, they're within scoring distance. Eight points is not a lot to make up, but. Uh, the way they're playing, you'd think that Benilde was ahead by a lot more than eight points. Bernie in the game also fell for uh, Red Knights. So three changes. Yeah. Now Benilde is back to that man to man. Spin move and a foul inside. It's going to be on Gugamos. And that's uh, six fouls for the Red Knights. So. Spring Lake Park will be in the bonus. They may have called this a two shot foul. His first, deep It's a nice free throw there. Referees are doing a nice job tonight in calling this ball game. You hardly know they're on the floor. They're efficient. Nice pass to Lynch. That was great court vision. See that back door. Robinson had nowhere to go inside there. There's a turnover. Yeah, it looked like Kajia decided he was just, regardless, he was going to get it, to get to the basket, and uh, almost got called for traveling the first time. There. Nice pass by Lynch. Hathaway shot won't go. Rebound for the Panthers. Robinson. Scribus Robinson. The three. Off the mark. Lynch with the rebound. Here comes the Red Knights. And Lynch is all over the floor tonight. Hathaway looked like he's going to take it all the way in. Passed out as uh, Gia got in defensively and. It's going to be Panther basketball here with 332 remaining in the first half. 26 17. Well, the Red Knights are back to that 1 3 1. Let's see how Spring Lake Park attacks us. They have to somehow get the ball into the middle to get a reversal. That shot by Agia did not go, and Polaric. And a foul called on the Panthers. 
Spring Lake Park had an opportunity that last time down the floor, Bruce. They did get the ball into the post, but then they kept the ball on that strong side rather than reversing it out of there to an open player. Maybe at halftime they'll see that. So T.C. Robinson picking up his second foul. Lynch. Rebound Polaric. Is this going to be on... Uh, could be on Robinson. So I, think, I think it might be. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that's number three. There's a case where a lot of coaches would take their player out after he picks up his second foul, but, you know, and I think uh, coach very upset about that one. Oh, almost stolen away, and the Red Knights got it back, fortunately. What was that, 32? Yeah, Gia. Yeah, he did a really nice. Came within inches of stealing that ball. Plus number 34 for the Panthers. A lot of coaches tell their players when you get an opportunity like that to try to catch the ball, intercept it. Some coaches say just tip the ball down the floor and then go get it. Uh, both ways work good, but in that case, uh, a tip would have probably got him the basket. Well, there's that pressure. You know what John Moore's defense, he switches it all the time. You don't know what you're going to see. Half court pressure, full court pressure. It's three different zones tonight, or three different types of defense in the half court. This is about the time I figure out what kind of defense he's playing. You're right, he switches it up again. Absolutely, and it takes a while for a team to adjust. And just about the time you adjust, there's another defense. So, uh, good coaching. Again, this is a very young team last year, and uh, he's had these players for a couple years now. That was a nice looking shot by Polaric. He just saw that one all the way. 13 point Red Knight lead. I believe that's the biggest lead of the game. I think it was down to six at one point. Nice shot by Price. Price, the three. Price averages 10 points a game. He has 13. There's a nice rebound by Gugamos. Draws the foul. He'll have a chance for a three-point play. Gugamos is kind of a quiet player. Don't know he's on the floor. He's just very efficient. He rebounds well, gets his nice body, good position, fundamentally strong. So now Ajia picking up his second foul. So Ajia with two fouls with a minute 38 to go will take a seat on the bench. Not wanting to have Ajia and Robinson with three fouls in this game, so. That's a beautiful shot. You mentioned that's not an easy shot no. either. That was a full speed running yes, layup. Yes, it was. A long jump. Mm -hmm. Nice defense by Strebus. He's going to take it and stall it away. Oh, Giles. Had trouble holding on to that one, and now we'll get a foul. Ojo picking up his second. Polaric one for two from the free throw line. Baker comes back in for the Red Knights. Well, Baker's only a sophomore. He looks real good. Nice basketball build. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So we're bragging him up. He throws the ball behind his back. A great assist. Driving back the other way is 
Devontae Scribus. Scribus is a nice looking athlete too. 36-24, Red Knights surrender 35 seconds to go here in the first half. Whoops. Baker. Now Polaric can back out. Six seconds. You gotta move. Baker. May not get the shot off here. Yep, he got fouled. Oh, like. that's a bad foul. He'd like to have that one back, no question. The foul is on number 22, Sam Baker. Oh, it's Who was that on Baker? That's on Baker. Should be in the bonus, shouldn't they? That's what I thought. But what do we have? Uh, it wasn't much of a push -off. No, it wasn't. Fans are reminded that the concession stand will be open. Now, if that was the NBA, that guy would have tried to put up a three-pointer and got got fouled, so he'd go to the line. Right, that may have been like a charge type call or something where they, I don't know, they didn't, uh, didn't take advantage of the bonus here, so uh, break anyways. 36-24, uh, our score at halftime. Uh, stay with us, we'll have a second half coming up here shortly. Hi, I'm Ben Affleck, and many actors have played the part of U.S. servicemen in the movies. But for veterans like James Crosby, their service and their sacrifice are real. And too often when they come home, their struggle continues. For over 60 years, Paralyzed Veterans of America has been fighting to help our injured veterans get the benefits they need and have earned. Paralyzed Veterans of America was there for me when I came home. Join me in supporting our Paralyzed Veterans. Visit pva.org. Bruce Homer along with Phil Frick as we get ready to start the second half. 36-24 in favor of the Red Knights. Scoring for the Red Knights, uh, leading scorer was Sam Lynch with 15 points. Second leading scorer was Polaric had nine. Holly had three, Bernie two, Baker two, and Edwards two. Turnover. Spring Lake Park's leading scorer was Price with 13. As Bernie hits a three. The first basket in the second half is always important. It sort of gives you just that little extra push, and uh, Benil was able to get that. So 15 point lead Edwards picking up the foul for the Red Knights his first first team foul here in the second half inside and Agia getting the basket. Robinson is in the game playing with uh, three fouls. His first Eric Curran picking up the foul, his first foul. And through the legs for the Red Knights and uh, Robinson with the ball for the Panthers. Robinson with only two free throws in this game. And Polaric, he kind of comes out of nowhere. He's right, a really good defensive player. Very rare to see the turnovers that we've seen here for the Red Knights. And uh, not a good shot that time by Robinson. He got inside, but uh, off the mark on his uh, follow through. Well, he tried to force that a little bit too much. A little more defensive oh. pressure, but wide open is well, Grant Holly. The Panthers really gambled on that. They sent four guys out to half court to uh, trap the player, which left no one back uncontested. 
yeah, basically Grant, a layup. Grant Guzzi says that strategy is not going to work. I'm going to take a timeout here, and he did. So you see that occasionally where defensive players will rush someone at half court, hoping they pick up their dribble. But usually you have to have someone back to get into passing lanes. That time they were just hung out to dry. Well, the next game for uh, Spring Lake Park, they'll be at St. Louis Park on uh, Tuesday, January 14th, and at Champ. Champlin Park on Wednesday, January 15th. Two SLP schools, right? Right. We we'll have the Benilde schedule over here, don't we, Phil? We do. White ball. Maybe we got it here. So, uh, as you, I think you mentioned uh, playing De La Salle. Uh, De La Salle and Hopkins, the second half of the season. It's going to be tough. At De La Salle and uh, home with St. Louis Park against Hopkins. There's a three again by Colin Price. Even without Reed Travis, their uh, De La Salle's been playing great basketball. Batted away by Holly. Great block. Here's Holly inside the lane. Did a nice job with uh, body control that time to get the basket. Nice little Vanille's fake. really doing a nice job getting the ball. They're just getting nice percentage shots right now, and that's all they really want to do. Don't get too, too crazy out here. Well, you know, in Spring Lake Park had a chance to maybe cut it to 10, and now we're back up to a 14-point lead for the Red Knights. Well, it seems like the Red Knights are able to just, you know, to get that interception uh, turnover just at the right time, just when Spring Lake Park starts to make a run. And a three, not good that time by Grievous. In and out by Bernie. Grievous takes it down the lane. And he steps on the baseline, or he get called for the foul as Bernie had good position. Lynch did a really nice job. He read that. He knew that ball was going to come across court. He just picked it off with one hand. Now we'll see Spring Lake Park. Looks like they're going to put a little full court press on again. Here's Edwards. Now Lynch. And we get charged on the other end, almost similar to what we saw on the opposite end right. of the floor. That time Colin Price taking the charge. That foul on uh, Grant Holly was his third foul, second team foul. Good rebound, Price, but that was a tough was put a, back. I haven't seen a shot like that for a while from that side. Oh. Interesting. Well, but he'll switch back to that 1 3 1 again and just uh, kind of confuse the Panthers. Lynch with pressure. This guy's open in the corners. Holly for three in and out. Off of the Red Knights, so the ball will go back to the Panthers. Levon checks in. Red Knights are getting really a lot of uncontested shots tonight. So Curran will take a seat on the bench with 14.08 to go here in the second half. Spring Lake Park is trying to attack this with a two guard front, which they should do, but they still have to try to get the ball into the middle. Bats it out of bounds. John Moore doing a lot of coaching from the sidelines. Trying to get his players in the right position here. 
One thing about John Moore, he coaches from the beginning of the game to the end of the game, to the last second. Just a, a wonderful coach. Falls on number 24 for the Red Grant Holly. Well, Grant Holly has now picked up his fourth foul, so Jack Hathaway will have to come into the game replacing Holly. Well, we'll see where the Red Knights are going to double team uh, this time down on the floor. Well, and Robinson finally hitting, so first basket from the floor for Robinson, and, now, and that's a three. Now the Panthers are really trying to put a little pressure on. We'll see how the Red Knights handle the pressure. One thing about the Red Knights, they do have five ball handlers on the floor at all times. So. Right now we're seeing a man-to-man -man defense played by the Panthers. That time the pass was intended for Hathaway, it's broken up by Robinson. The Gia long pass back out. Inside for Agia, Levon, Agia back out. Here's Robinson. Levon, double team hook shot, short, good rebound by Levon. Missed the follow up though. He's had a couple of those inside opportunities. Panthers did a really good job getting back that time though. But a nice spin move by Lynch. Followed up his own shot. Stays Lynch, in he is just all over the floor. It's fun to watch him. I think the Red Knights aren't moving as much right now as they were before. They seem to be a little slower on their feet. I didn't see who pulled that rebound out, but whoever it was for Benil was really up in the air. So now Spring Lake Park with a chance to put this uh, lead back down to single digits. 43-32 the score. Inside. Gia foul. Spring Lake Park have tried that a few times, that high-low where the ball goes out to the point and then back down into the hole in the post. Uh, not quite successful, but a good idea. The ball is on number 10 for the Red Knights, Sam Lynch. First, his first, team four. Sam Baker in the game for the Red Knights. I think John Moore felt like his player, defensive player, was set. And the player put his shoulder into him. Not happy on the sidelines. The G hit both free throws, and we're down to a nine-point game. Here's a Red Knights did a great job breaking the press. Sure did. Backcourt foul on the Panthers. This on 42. If it is Robinson, number four. Now, Benil did a really nice job getting the ball into the middle, kicking it down the floor. Had there not been a foul, they would have had a two on one easy fast break. So, TC Robinson has four fouls. Grant Holly has four for the Red Knights. Still 10 54 left to go in regulation time here. Baker. Lynch penetrates in, and the foul should be on Levon, I believe. Four team fouls for the Panthers. Pass stolen away. Here's a Gia. Oh, oh. And we're going to have put a charge. Put his shoulder down. Yes, he did. 
he really had Gia had nowhere to go and that was a great defensive effort but uh, Gia should have just taken his time got his head up and a couple of players with him that time too he did that uh, big foul it's his third he's at two on one again Bernie for three misses One thing is uh, Red Knights aren't getting the inside points on the paint right now. Here's a two on one. It was Lynch again. Lynch had a block by Scree was blocked again. Rebound by the Red Knights off the mark. Screbus and a foul. That might be on Lynch maybe. Oh, this is the Gia, his fourth. He almost picked up a technical. The players had to hold him back. He didn't think he should have got that one. And uh, well, fortunately, they have a long. Or Spring Lake Park has a long bench because there's a lot of fouls being committed out here right now. Bernie's shot missed. Rebound taken by Curran. Yeah, two big scorers though out of the game for. Uh, Spring Lake Park as they're trying to get back in this game. So Aaron Flink will head into the game. Ogile out. Lilenthal in for the Red Knights. Bernie out. Red Knights a little bit of a cold hand so far here. It's that same pass. time we talked about. There's a three short. Lilienthal with the rebound. Oh, pass behind. Coach behind Moore isn't too happy with the passing tonight. You can, I'm sure when they get back to practice, they're going to talk about that. Well, they're letting the Panthers back in this ball game. With their two scores on the bench. Mm -hmm. And we're at 9 18. It'll be interesting to see when Coach Guzzi feels is the right time to bring the players back. Well, they'll probably go down below the eight minute mark, but that's probably about as much with the you know, 10 12 point differential. He's got to get them in soon. This is a player you're probably going to see, Scribus, trying to get to the basket, trying to get a screen so he can get. Levon stolen away by Lynch. Hardest yeah. thing in basketball trying to dribble across the middle when there are everyone on defense is collapsing on you. But another turnover. <laughs> but the thing is Spring Lake Park hasn't been able to take advantage of these turnovers. Right. Let's see if they go that high low again like they've done the last two times down. Forced into Scrivas that time. Stolen away. Drive to the basket by Baker. Did not go. Save. Whoa. Wow. That Scrivas got faked out by Lynch. Went way up in there. Came down hard. Well, he did a nice job landing, though. Well, we got our. Uh, yeah. We got the uh, Agia and Robinson ready to come back into this game. It's been a long time since the Red Knights have scored. But they don't mind taking a little clock right now, too. So they can get the right player, and there's Lynch. When Lynch gets that shot on this left side of the basket, he is deadly. It's a great play. Panthers outscoring the Red Knights 10 to 9 here in the second half. There's Baker. That was a nice looking shot by Baker. Okay, see how fast the Red Knights can just put that lead back up to all of a sudden we're, uh, we're at a 14 point lead. And I think uh, time out uh, for Spring Lake Park to get their uh, players back in the game. Well, that was a nice looking shot by the sophomore Baker. He didn't hesitate. He caught it in a rhythm. 
and squared up and just shot it. Didn't have to think about it. Well, if you're Coach uh, Moore and you know that you've got Agia and Robinson in with four fouls, I think you have to try and take it to one of those guys, get them, you know, see if you can get them out of there. They're going to have to, uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see how they play, you know, if, if they play off the ball a little bit more. A lot of times, you know, when you're in the huddle and you're telling someone, okay, uh, the other guy on the other team has four fouls, let's go after him. Seems like it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. You really have to make an effort to do that. And, uh, um, you know, most of the time it's very difficult to get pick up that fifth foul. Looked like at the beginning of the game, Phil, it was going to be a pretty high scoring affair. And uh, again, it's uh, slowed down a little bit. Both teams uh, struggle a little bit with turnovers, but also, uh, you know, some of the sh some of the shooting percentage here. Uh, we don't have have the overall percentage, but it hasn't been uh, that great. Well, benil has got a two day rest because on Saturday they play at De La Salle and that's going to be a really big game. A little bit of a hold that time by Polaric. That'll be his first foul in the game. Only the fifth team foul for the Red Knights. So one more and uh, Panthers will be in the bonus. Next foul will have uh, Benilde in the bonus. There's a steal, Polaric. One on two. Well, Polaric did such a nice job, just stripped him so easy. Came out of nowhere, really. So back to a 16 point lead. It was down to nine. Seven unanswered points for the Red Knights. Nice pass inside. Scribus with his sixth point of the game. Stolen away and a foul. Game has kind of gone in spurts as far as defensively. Both teams just kind of all of a sudden break up, steal the ball, be able to get a, you know, a to the free throw line or else a layup. So that foul called on Hathaway. That's going to send Curran to the line. Eric Curran at the line for the Panthers. With the game for the Red Knights, Jason Edwards. Jason Edwards back in for the Red Knights. Free throw missed, rebound by Agia. Almost a three point play by Agia. And quickly the Panthers could have got back down to almost double single digits there. So AJ Agia will go to the free throw line. He's three for four from the line. Well, Agia's got a nice football build. I wonder. Uh, if he has, if he, I'm not sure if he plays football or not. Oh, he did. He, I remember. Looks like he could. I remember announcing him on the football field. I remember pronouncing that name, so I, I know I can't remember where he played, but I do remember the pronunciation. Good job by uh, Panthers getting back that time, and here's uh, Baker. Baker. Baker found a nice soft spot over there. Eight in the game for Baker. There's a Gia. And a foul. Well, the Gia is a load under the basket. I mean, he's tough to guard, but he's so strong. The ball's on the red dice, number 22, Sam Baker. He's Eighth team foul for the Red Knights, second foul on Baker. And Gia missing. And Gia on the line for the Panthers. So a pair of missed free throws by Agia. Now five for eight from the line. There's a travel. Well, 
And John Moore didn't like that call. Usually they don't call traveling unless you try to get up. In this case, he just fell on the floor and slid a little bit. Three. Agio with the rebound, loses it. Now stolen away on the other side. Here's Robinson, tough move. Robinson still gets the rebound off of his leg and out of bounds, and the Red Knights will get the basketball with 5.17 to go. Red Knights up by 14. We don't keep track of turnovers on oh. passes, but there is a, a wear your pencil out tonight. It's been a little ugly here in the second half. There's a long three. And the foul over the back on Spring Lake Park's Eric Curran. Holly will come into the game with four fouls. Lynch will sit down. Price in now for the Panthers. Grievous picks up the foul. Well, Sam Baker's done a Ball nice job tonight, uh, not only with his three-point shooting, but his rebounding ability to get to the free throw line is just a real nice-looking ball player as a young sophomore. Stevens has three fouls, eight for the team. So a couple of free throws by Baker. He has 10 in the game. Back to 16 point Red Knight lead. Scribus, Price. There's a three. Rebound, Robinson. Price, that is a tough shot. Not a good shot by Price that time as he forced that one up. Well, I think a little bit uh, just try to get the ball up is all they're trying to do right now. White ball. It's a good idea. Right. <laughs> good idea. <laughs> a lot of turnovers, so. <laughs> just off by a hair on those cuts to the basket. Seen right a few now, with a, you know, with about a little over four minutes to go and a 16 point lead you want to control the ball get some time off the clock make good decisions you know and then you can get an easy basket fine but you've got control you have to know the time and the score situation nice drive robinson for two. seven points for robinson the last time spring lake park got burned on this press they have to get number 42 uh back on the Defense a little bit deeper, or he'll go over the top again. Nice. Right there, that's exactly what we're talking about. Robinson okay. got up too deep. Charging called on Baker. Robinson has to recognize that he, you know, you come up to, you want to help, but also you got to be aware that they're going to go over the top because there's more offensive players down the floor than we have defensive players. Under four minutes to go. And a foul. If that's Holly, it's his fifth. Nope. Called on Edwards. The foul is on number 12, Jason Edwards, his second team tenth. Uh, 
Sam Lynch entering the game. Robinson at the line for the Panthers. Sam Lynch back into the game for the Red Knights and Robinson, for two. Robinson four for four from the free throw line. Robinson almost gets the steal. Gets about five rows up into the bleachers too. Yeah, you like that if you're a uh, coach on Spring Lake Park, the players aren't quitting. Well, you know, that's they've actually they're playing a little harder right now than they were earlier in the game. 12 point red night lead. Lynch seems, seems like when Lynch is in the game things stabilize. Well, he, he is really a catalyst on this team and he's such a good shooter. And he's a smart basketball player. There's a shooter's touch for three. Robinson for three. If Robinson gets up in this press a little bit over the top. Well, he almost traveled with it there. You gotta love the way the Red Knights move the ball right now. That's so nice. Uh, but Spring Lake Park is, you know, gambling or double teaming when they can. It leaves a player open. All Benilde has to do is recognize it. Who's the open player? 21 in the game for Robinson. Oh, Baker wanted that shot. He's got two threes right from that spot before. Good decision. 11 point lead, 59-48. Well, the shots that the Red Knights will take now will be shots that are in the paint, probably, as someone will cut to the basket. If they can find a, a player underneath, they'll take it. Otherwise, they'll just keep working it around the perimeter. Stolen away, actually. Unless they get the ball stolen away, right? Not, not a good foul by Polaric because no time goes off the clock. And uh, we're going to get the Panthers will get two free throws here. His second, team 11. Correction on the foul was Lynch. And again, in that situation with the ball in the backcourt, you just, uh, especially with the team in the bonus and getting two two free throws, uh, you don't want to you you take time off the clock. A 10 point lead with two minutes. Uh, it's not yeah. over, but uh, the nil did uh, kind of let it slip a little bit. Nice touch by Robinson. He's six of six on the free 59 throw. 59 50 with two minutes to go. Holly Crap. And a timeout. It's a nice job by Spring Lake Park making a trap right in the corner here on the sideline and the 10 second line. Very difficult. Well, again, for Spring Lake Park, uh, you know, we'll get to a situation where uh, they're going to have to maybe start following pretty soon. And uh, a couple of players they have in the lineup uh, can't really afford to follow is uh, Gia and Robinson. They have uh, four fouls, so one more for those guys, and they're out. So they just have to make sure they note, okay, we have a couple of players in the game. You're the guys who have to do the following if we follow. I'm sure that's what Guzzi's talking about tonight, right now in the huddle. Is you know, who should fall mm -hmm. and who they should fall if they can. Yeah, great game uh, for uh, Sam Lynch on the Red Knights as he's over 20 points in this uh, ball game. Well, we talked about him earlier. I mean, he's he, he's an all around player. He's a good player on defense. Great shot. Understands the game. We mentioned he has a really a high basketball IQ. You can just see his head. The game is slowed down for him. Nice high school basketball player. I thought Polaric's played fairly, uh, has had a pretty good game as well, too. 13 points uh, for Polaric. Well, we mentioned this earlier. Benilde is a balanced team. They play uh, well together. Uh, it seems like they are about the same size. They all are good ball handlers. So uh, Robinson sort of has come on here in the second half. 16 points in the game. It's real quiet. In the first half, almost stolen away by a Gia. Three miss. Holly got the rebound. Now the Red. I don't Knights. know if that was the shot that John Moore wanted, though. That <laughs> was the, the shot he wanted right there. Dribble penetration. 
get the other defensive player to come up and help and then see the open player. Long three. It's good. Well, Robinson wasn't shy when that was the NBA three. Robinson, you can see in the second half. I mean, he got in foul trouble. He sat out a lot in the first half, but he's really come on in the second half. I didn't realize he had that kind of range. He hasn't shot that shot yet tonight, but that was an easy shot for him. Yeah, and his third three of the game. And uh, eight point game, so. I think the Red Knights, um, you know, they got the ball into Lynch that time for the easy basket on the other end of the court. And, and, uh, and that's what I'm sure uh, Coach Moore is saying is we're not going to be taking these outside shots. We need to either work it inside or let them follow us and go to the free throw line. Well, you're exactly right. There's no reason to, you know, to try to get too quick with the shot when you have this time and the score in your favor. Whereas on the other hand, Spring Lake Park's going to have to start fouling a little bit too if they can't can't let too much time run off the clock. The Red Knights have done a great job on the pressure that has been applied by Spring Lake Park. We haven't uh, we really haven't seen any like backcourt turnovers. They've been able to get the ball into the front court and break the press. Well, they put some Spring Lake Park puts so much pressure on the initial pass in, and it leaves other players open, and that's why. Uh, Manila has been able to beat that press. Most of their turnovers has really been on the offensive end of the court. Yep, you're right. Now we'll see how this works out here. Half the way, he gets fouled, so he'll go to the line. Falls number 34 for the Panthers. Jack with Guile. And the game for the Panthers is 34 Zachel. Zach Dill Guile picks up the foul. 14, Colin Price. Well, free throw miss. Eight point game. Here comes the uh, Panthers. They're trying to get they it to want Robinson. Robinson to get that three pointer. Here's the other guy they wouldn't mind taking as Price has hit a few in this game. And the rebound by the Red Knights. Robinson calling someone to foul other than him. Smart play by, uh, yeah. by Lynch not taking that shot. So Lynch is one for two in the game. will go to the free throw line. The ball's up for 14 for the Panthers. It's the last one. And, well, no, it's not the one and one anymore. It's a two it's shot first. foul. Well, I think uh, Benil had a 16 point lead at one point in this game, and uh, you know they closed it up as a respectable game right now. So Lynch, one of three from the line. Lynch for one. Under a minute, 45 seconds to go. Robinson puts one up. Here's another three, almost a foul call on the Red Knights. And now the Red Knights, Bernie will go to the free throw line. Foul number 35 for the Panthers. Devontae Spurius is fourth. So Spring Lake Park it was 2 and 0 in conference will now go to 2 and 1 and the red knights are they now 3 and 1 Phil I got to check that out here red knights will be 3 and 1 spring lake park will have two wins and one loss so the vanilla moves up to the top of the conference they'll be tied Maybe with Tatino Grace, we don't know right. how they came out. So 20 seconds to go, Spring Lake Park gets the basketball back. White ball. 11 point game. Yeah. 
Scribus doesn't go, and the Red Knights can run the clock out. Price will pick up the foul. The foul's number 14, Colin Price. His second, deep 10. At the line for the Red Knights, Colin Pollard. Pollard two for four from the line. Down a half a second. And a shot at the buzzer. That good. Well, both teams played real hard. I thought that Benil tonight just had a little more advantage with their offense. They were more balanced. Also, they were able to get a few more baskets in transition. They seem to have a little trouble with passing as far as uh, towards the end of the fourth quarter. I'm sure John Moore will try to fix that next time and give give Spring Lake Park a lot of credit too. They fell down by 18, 16, 18 points, but still stayed in the ball game, fought to the end. Uh, that's all you can ask for a high school basketball team. Yeah, Benil led at halftime 36-24. Both teams scored 29 here in the second half. Leading scorer in the game, Sam Lynch. 24 points. Great, uh, great effort by Sam and uh, I think Polaric, the second leading scorer. Well, the other player that really Ball hit some point. key shots, Bruce, was, was Baker. Sam Baker was able to hit those three just as the game was starting to turn a little bit, uh, just from his own sweet spot. Nice looking shot. Yeah, you know, he didn't start and came in the game and uh, ended up with 10 points. You're right, Phil. So that was a you know, good effort by, by Sam Baker. And uh, for Spring Lake Park, uh, their leading scorer, T.C. Robinson, 19 points. So right at his uh, right at his average. His average so, yeah. so Phil, for Benilde, we mentioned a tough schedule coming up uh, as they play De La Salle in their next game. I think it's, on uh, Saturday. And uh, trying to do the schedule to see when their next home game is here. Tino so, Grace on Friday, January 17th. Or that's at Totino. So they so the next home game oh, is uh, Tuesday, January 14th. Fridley okay. comes into Penel St. Margaret's here, and so uh, again, if you want to get out to a game, uh, January 14th is the next opportunity. And uh, we want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, on behalf of Phil Furk, I'm Bruce Holbrook with the final score: Penel 65, the Panthers 53. Good night. <laughs>